the Lord has made. Yes, it is, brother. Amen. Yeah. We will rejoice. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And be glad in it. Yeah. Amen. Pastor told us years and months of that. Said, praise the God. And based on how we feel, right. Sister Rita. Amen. 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 And based on what we have or don't have. Right. And based on the pain that we have. Every right. we wake up in the morning. But praise the God. And based on what we know. Yeah. Right. And when you know something about it. Yeah. In spite of how you feel. Oh, yeah. In spite of what you yeah. get yeah. through. You can still thank God and pray. Hallelujah. I'm not going to magnify the problem. I'm going to magnify the problem solver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's often time. Amen. It's often time. Man, it's time for you to give God some glory. You need to give God some praise. Amen. Amen. And Pastor, tell us often that now we have it so that you don't have to run. Run out of the bank and let Brother Earl run you down to the bank. You can open up your phone. Amen. Amen. I think it's called Guya. Gimlifying. Gimlifying. Amen. You can go to your phone. Amen. And download. Amen. And get the instruction to tell you how to do it. Amen. On this one. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. We enjoy the fellowship. Amen. With the brothers. Amen. From yesterday. Yes, Amen. We ate. But I, I, I sent the show. I mean, it's not my best. I think he brought the bill over to us. And the other bill, I said, my God, I thought I'd too much food. I got to charge me for what I ate. And I'll probably have to pay for about $3. For what I ate. Amen. But it was a buffet. Amen. But, 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 but it's over. I thought I was going home and I thought of him that I said, I refuse. To come here on this morning, come on, Brother Joe, and give God and give God less than what I gave yes. to the people for the food yes. yesterday. Yes. Amen. Give them all the thirteen dollars, yes. and I'm gonna give God two dollars for the food yes. today. That's yes. a lot because if He just touched my body, I wouldn't be able to eat. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Right. I was so many carry you this morning. Yes. Amen. To give. Amen. On this morning, like you never gave before. Amen. Miller Costner, they said that a man brought God and he said, Lord, how do we brought you from your tithes and your offerings? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We want you to give liberally. Amen. Amen. On this morning. As you stand in your feet and prepare, if you don't have a tithe envelope, amen, just raise up your hand and the ushers will be happy to bring you one. Yes. Amen. 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 If you're here for your first time, amen, if you make the check, they just take it out from your desk in a minute, two seconds. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Does anyone have their tithe? Yes. Amen. Your offering in your hand. Yes. Amen. We want to bring blessings to the house. We bless yes. to the house yes. of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because we know when the blessings goes up. Yes. Amen. Not only does the blessing come down, Brother Earl, but the house, but the blesser. Yes. Amen. Yes. Will yes. come down. Yes. Amen. And bless you. Amen. Yes. And then he said. He said, press down, amen, shaking together, amen, and running over, amen. So we just thank God, amen. Well, we all really felt on this morning, amen. Uh, we want to make sure that we give God something that, 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 that he can be proud of, that he can be glorified by him, amen, on this morning, amen. Father, we thank you for what I have seen thus far, and our ears have heard him this morning. Thank you for the room, God. Thank you for every song this morning that was played. That has been to our spirit this morning, God. Lord God, we thank you for this praise thank team this morning, God. How you have touched their hearts and their minds and their spirits, God. So they can give us the right song at the right time, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, I thank you for the visitors that have came on this morning. Oh, God, I pray that this will be the last time, God. Because they will find that this is their new destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. We thank you. God, for my sisters and brothers, God, that I haven't seen up until this morning, God. So I just thank you for each and every one that is present this morning. I pray there's so many sickness in their body. I pray that you will heal, that you will touch right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Continue to bring us just Mary and their family, God. Yes, as they go through the hour of the reading, God. Yes, we know, God, that you are a healer, God. Yes, we know God. that you are present help in time of need. Yes, so Lord. we just thank you in advance. All the what you thank you, But the best is yet to come, God. Lord, God. There is a word from the Lord. Lord. And we thank you right now. It's going to come with the anointing. And it's going to come with power. Yes, so we thank you this morning for the gift and the givers on this morning. Yes, I pray, God, that you will turn it back to them and your folks. And this life, this is our prayer in Jesus. Thank God. Amen. 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 Amen.
because there was a spirit beginning to come into the church and beginning to permeate it that was causing doubt, that was causing people to walk away from their faith. It was causing them to, to, to follow, uh, Peter said, uh, cunningly devised fables. But he said here, uh, he said uh, in, in verse 1, he said, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as, as his divine power hath given us unto us all things, everybody say all things, all things. that pertain to life and godliness yeah. through the knowledge of him that hath called us to what? To glory and to virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Everybody say exceeding great, exceeding great. and precious. In other words, as great as you can think they are, they're better than that. Which is why the Bible said, uh, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for us that love him. He said, whereby we are given exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Everybody say divine nature. Divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So in other words, we have been given a new nature. We have been given a new nature. Uh, we at one point carried without hindrance the nature of Adam. But because God has, because of Christ being the second Adam, having went into a garden, I, I, it is by no coincidence that Christ yielded in obedience to the will of God in a garden. Because Adam disobeyed him in a garden. And Jesus had to go into the same environment, into the same temptation, and he had to obey the will of God regardless of what was to face him. And then he said, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound. Everybody say abound. Yeah. In other words, they are supposed to be what is yeah. overtaking you. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. These attributes that Peter has just declared. Diligence. Faith. Virtue. Yeah. Knowledge. Yeah. Temperance. And temperance just means self-control. Yeah. Temperance. Patience. Godliness. Yeah. Brotherly kindness and charity. All of these things are supposed to be overtaking you. When you become partaker of the divine nature, these, these attributes are supposed to now be overtaking you. Yeah. And as a child of God, we have to do inventory within ourselves and say, yeah. are these things overtaking me? Yeah. Yeah. Am I still being overcome by that carnal mind or are these attributes, are these what I'm becoming now? And he said here, uh, and I, I'm going to go somewhere, but I want to lay a groundwork here. He said, for these things abound in you. They make you that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Right. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Yeah. In other words, he's saying if he behaves differently than this, he has forgotten that he was purged from all of that. Right. This is a powerful, yeah. this is a powerful chapter in this epistle says. Yeah. In other words, I should never be in a place where the sins of my past are overtaking my present. Amen. Because those things were purged from me. And if they're purged from me, then I'm taking upon virtue and patience and yeah. charity and brotherly kindness yeah. and temperance. I'm taking on the nature of Christ. Yeah. He says here, he says, uh, Wherefore, the rather give, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never yeah. fall. Amen. Amen. Everybody say never. never. You shall never fall. If you give diligence to what God is trying to do in you, you will never fall. How many of y'all would like to get into a position where you never fall? Amen. Where you never fall? We, we, we don't see, we miss these little parts of these scriptures. We, if we 
give heed to these things, we will never fall. He said, for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If I say abundantly, abundantly, an entrance shall be ministered to you abundantly in the kingdom of our, Je of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them. And be established in the present yeah. truth. He said, I don't care if you already know this. I'm going to keep bringing it to your attention. Yeah. Because you need to be reminded yeah. of what Jesus did at Calvary. Of the effect it took in your life. And of the promise that it holds out for you. If you accept, embrace, and obediently follow after these things. He said, yea, I think it means as long as I am in this tabernacle. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Amen. He said as long as I'm in my body. Yeah. I'm going to remind you of these things. There's all kinds of people always looking for a new prophecy. And a new revelation. But it's right here saints of God. If you'll just give diligence to add to your faith virtue. Amen. And to add to your uh, add to virtue patience. And yeah. patience uh, temperance. And temperance godliness. And godliness brother. If you'll just allow these works of the spirit to abound in you you will never fall and you will be ministered a grand entrance into the kingdom of Jesus Christ Amen. that is the promise and the exceeding precious promise that is held out for us now Paul, uh, Peter said here in the 16th verse he said for we have not followed cunningly devised fables yeah. we are not following after fairy tales here yeah. Look at somebody and tell them this is not a fairy tale. This is reality. This is not a fairy tale. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell them Jesus really is coming. This is not a fairy tale. The kingdom of Jesus Christ is really coming. This is not a fairy tale. He is going to resurrect you and give you an immortal body like it in his glorious body. That is not a fairy tale. He is going to bring about a condition on the face of this earth where the lion will eat straw like the ox and the wolf and the lamb will lay down together and the suckling child will play upon the cockatrice den. I'm telling you, he's bringing about a kingdom where they will not harm nor molest in all of his holy mountain, but the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the face of the sea. I'm telling you, this is not a fairy tale. It is the reality of every child of God. You get into a place where hopelessness overtakes you, where failure overtakes you. You remind yourself that this is not the sum total of my hope. I am looking for a city that has foundation, whose pillar and maker is God. You have to remind yourself of these things. And if you do that, you won't fall. He said, when we made known unto you the power. And coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Yes. Say, what does that mean? Saints of God, when they saw that dove come down on him. Yeah. And heard that voice say, this is my yeah. beloved son. Yeah. Yeah. In whom I am well pleased. Yeah. When they saw him in the Mount of Transfiguration. Where he yeah. was transfigured yeah. from his earthly tabernacle. And they saw in that great vision the son of God. Standing in his own kingdom. Yeah. Talking with Moses and Elijah. Yeah. They saw him. Yeah. And that settled it for them. You have to understand who they were when, they, when he found them. Peter... He was reckless with his mouth. Yeah. He was reckless. Yeah. I mean reckless. Yeah. He would cuss you out in a minute. Yeah. He rebuked the Lord. I mean rebuked him to his face. Yeah. Peter, he, 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 was, he was, though he was bold, he was also fearful. Yeah. He denied the presence of the Lord. He denied knowing the Lord. All of these things were working in him. Yeah. Matthew was a tax collector. And by reason of him being a tax collector, he was most likely a thief. He was taking more than he should have from the people. And the people hated him. Yeah. It's a true sense of God. That's who these guys were. They were fishermen. They were cowards. They, 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 were, they were the rejected of society. They didn't get to go into the seminary with all their best buddies who came from the upper echelon of society. They were kicked out of it and told, you have, we've taught you enough, now you go take on your father's trade. Which is why they were tax collectors and fishermen. 
But Jesus came and he saw something about them that no one else could see. And you have to get that in your spirit that God does not look upon the outward appearance. And that doesn't mean that doesn't mean just dress. People make that about dress, but that has nothing to do with dress. When he's talking about looking on the outward appearance, he's talking about who you are and what people define you as and what your what your your your, your uh, heritage is. Other people in that day, that was a huge moment uh, of, 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 uh, of being defined when you came into adulthood. You either were able to go on with the upper echelon or you were have to be rejected by them and take on your father's train. And so Jesus came to them. And, and those boys, when they were when they were permitted to come into the synagogue, they would choose who their teacher was. They would choose who their rabbi was. And that's the reason why Jesus looked at them and said, you have not chosen me. Amen. But I have chosen you. He said, I have chosen the base things of this world to confound them that are wise. He said, I didn't go to the seminary and get the guy who was well educated. I went down to the fisherman's boat. And when, I, when Jesus found them, they were already in failure and despair because when he came to them, they were washing their nets. They had fished all night and caught nothing. And when he came to them, they were washing their nets. But Jesus looked at them and said, oh no, launch out into the deep. Launch out into the deep. And there they cast their net on the other side and they brought in more than their boats could hold. And Jesus was showing them right there. Without me, you may be nothing. Oh, but I'm going to let you do everything you need to through me. And so here, Peter said, this is not a fairy tale to us. We saw it with our own eyes. How do you know that these men really saw it? Because look at the change of their disposition. When the, when the captain of, 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 of the guard and, and, and those soldiers came to get Jesus, uh, the, the servant uh, came to get Jesus, uh, they, they all fled from him. Every one of them ran. Every one of them. In fact, one boy was so terrified he ran out of his clothes. They were scared to death. Peter followed him from afar off, but he still denied him. Right. Because they were afraid for their lives. Amen. But something happened to those boys yeah. when they saw the resurrected body of Jesus Christ yeah. and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. An entire change came over them to where no longer were they running from persecution, but they were running headlong, knowing that persecution was coming. But they had to get this gospel out. They had to get this word out. And so when Peter said here, this is not a fairy tale to us. We saw this. You got to know they saw it because Peter would never deny him again. Those boys never ran again. My God in heaven, they were willing to face beatings and murdering and persecution. If that's what it took for his name's sake. In fact, when John, hallelujah, when, when, when Peter and John healed the man at the gate, beautiful, and they cast him into prison, they didn't deny him. They didn't say, fine, we won't say anything else. No, 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 no. They said, all we can do is but speak of those things which we have seen and heard. And when they went back to the church, they began to rehearse to them all the things that they suffered for his name's sake. And everybody with one accord began to glorify the name of Jesus until the house they were standing in began to shake. I'm going to tell you something. If you're not changing, you've not encountered Jesus. If you're not turning your life around, you've not encountered Jesus. Because there's no way for you to encounter the Lord and stay like you are. But there's something about encountering Him. There's something about receiving the power of the Holy Ghost that if any man be in Christ, he is indeed a new preacher.
because if you don't follow after holiness, you will not see God. And holiness is a work of the Holy Ghost that goes into the heart of a man and changes him. Yeah. It changes your personality. Yeah. 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 Amen. Now the Bible said, if any man is baptized yeah. into Christ, yeah. that he has put on Christ. Yeah. Right. He's put on Christ. The word put on that is like putting on a vesture. Yeah. He's taken off something yeah. and put on something. Yeah. If we're not taught that we have now taken on a new vesture, we will continue to walk around in our old filthy rags. Right. Amen. Or we'll treat our new vesture as if it was filthy rags. Amen. 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 But if you understand that you have put off the old man, you say, I don't know. I don't know if I've done that. Well, let me let me go to Ephesians 4 and verse 21. Praise God. I want you to change clothes this morning. I want you, listen, most of us are still walking around like Clark Kent. Don't act like y'all know who Clark Kent is. Y'all know who Clark Kent is. And some of y'all young people know who Clark Kent is because Superman has been remade. Right. He ain't the same. He ain't the same. Some of us are walking around disguised. You never saw who he really was until he took off his disguise. Right. Superman was not his costume, Clark Kent was. Right. Exactly. Right. Amen. Some of y'all keep walking around in your costume. My Lord. Because you will not accept who you really are. Yeah. Yeah. My Lord. My Lord. Amen. Come on. That old Adam, that's your costume. Come on. Right. Because Paul said, I was crucified with Christ. Yes. Nevertheless, I live, but not I. It is Christ that lives in me. So in other words, when I went to the foot of the cross and I accepted that incredible sacrifice and I repented of my sin and I asked forgiveness, I took something off. Right. When I went into that water and I was baptized in his name, I put something on. Right. Most of us reach back to Calvary. And get our costume and put it back on. Because we refuse to accept the true vesture that we now wear. Go to verse 20, actually, Simone. And Paul's dealing with all of these, uh, these issues. Uh, works of darkness being alienated uh, from the life of God. Uh, works of lasciviousness. He said, but you have not so learned Christ. There were some that were learning Christ was okay with continuing works of darkness. Right. Continuing working in lasciviousness. And the word lasciviousness just means laws. In other words, you don't have a law that you follow. You are your own law, your own mind, your own mentality. But there's no standard. Uh, I saw a post that blew my mind uh, of a preacher. He said, he said, if, he said, "People, preachers need to start teaching their people more about the love of God and less about the Ten Commandments. Wow. Wow. The Ten Commandments are the love of God. Right. Because the Ten Commandments teach me how to love Him. Right. And the Ten Commandments teach me how to love you. Because right. if I will obey the Ten Commandments, I will not disobey Him and I won't treat you wrong. The first half of the Ten Commandments is how we should love him. The right. second is how we should love you. Right. How can you teach people less about the Ten Commandments and more about the love of God? But see, that is what I'm talking about when I talk about people who are uneducated in the Scripture. We have to be careful who we listen to. Because if we're not careful, these words, which are vain jangling, sound so good to our human mind right. that we just embrace them when actually they're in complete error. You cannot teach people the Ten Commandments and not the love of God because it is the love of God. Amen. If I love God, I will worship any other God. Right. 
If I love God, I won't make any other idols. If I love God, I, I, I'll, I'll honor him, I'll love him, I'll bless him, I'll remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. If I love God, none of those things will be in my life. If I love you, I won't steal, I won't kill. If I love you, I won't covet what you have. If I love you, I won't commit adultery. Come on, somebody. If I love you, I will obey the Ten Commandments, which is why Jesus said, loving God with everything you are and loving your neighbor as yourself upon these two hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, if Jesus just simplified the Ten Commandments, but he did not eradicate them. Right. Amen. Amen. And so Paul said, there are, there are people learning that you can continue to be in lawlessness and still love God, but you can't. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Right. Amen. They're, they're teaching them that they can live in lawless, lawlessness and be saved. And I've had people tell me, Pastor, why do you preach so much on sin? Because sin is what got us in trouble in the first place. And sin is what keeps us in trouble. The reason why I'm preaching against it is because I want you to get to a place where you don't fall. You may stumble. But you'll never fall. Right. Amen. Amen. But he said, you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard of him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you do what? You put off concerning the former conversation. The word conversation here literally means lifestyle. You put off the former lifestyle, which is the old man. Right. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hold your finger right there. Let, let's, let's talk about what that old man looks like. And my keyboard in my office is connected to this, and so it won't. There we go. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Amen. Amen. I'm looking for the scripture where Paul said, and such were some of you. First Corinthians 6. Let's talk about this. And, and we'll um, just start at one. And I, I want to I I balloon this at the end, but I want to lay this foundation so you understand what, what we're talking about. He said, dare any of you having a matter against another, and he's not talking about against the world. He's talking about two people in the church. Go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Which shows you there has to be this respect and honor for, for spiritual authority or else you will not accept the judgment of someone who's in that position. He said, and if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? We're talking about when Jesus comes and sets up his theocratic kingdom on the earth, he's going to sit some of you all on thrones and you're going to have to judge. So the Lord's saying you're going to judge the world, but you can't judge these small matters. He said, know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgment of these things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. He said, I don't understand this. You understand what's coming. You're elders in the church. You, you're bishops in the church. And yet you count yourself unworthy to judge. But you take people who are least esteemed. In other words, they're the youngest person Walking spiritually with God in the church And you say here you judge this matter Verse 5 He said I speak to your shame Is it so that there is not a wise man Among you no not one that Shall be able to judge between brethren keep going He said but brother Go to law and with brother And that before the unbelievers He said now therefore there is utterly A fault among you because ye Go to law with one another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? That's a whole other message. He said, Nay, you do wrong and defraud, and that your brother know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Now listen to this. Not fornicators. Not idolaters. Not adulterers. Not effeminate. That's homosexual. Keep going. He said, not drunkards, or, I'm sorry, not those who are not nor abusers of themselves and mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He said, and such, what, what's that verb there? Word. 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 Everybody say word. word. Word has a past tense to it. In other words, this is something that used to be. 
This is not something that now is. He said, and such were some of you. But ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. He said, in other words, everything has changed for you. Some of you were covetous. Some of you were effeminate. Some of you were abusers of yourselves of mankind. Some of you were thieves and extortioners. And all of these works of the flesh were working in your life. But that is who you were. Right. Amen. When I come to Jesus, that lifestyle, I do away with it. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, that's not who I am now. That's just not who I am. That may be who somebody else is, but that's not who I am. That, that's the world, but that's not me because I'm no longer of this world. I have been born again. Yeah. That's the reason why I don't deal with the argument, well, well, they were born this way. Well, if that were the case, if that were, let's say, let's say you're right, that was the case. The hope of the scripture is that we can be born again. And just because somebody may have been born with a disposition to be a thief or to be covetous or to be a, a truce breaker or, or, or even a feminine, to be any of that, just because we were born with that disposition because of the knowledge of sin. We have the opportunity by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God to be born again. And when we are born again, just like the thief, we got to take that off. The liar, we got to take that off. The effeminate, we got to take that off because that is not a costume. And when children of God come to church and they're still thieves, they're wearing a costume. They're still homosexual, they're wearing a costume. They're still adulterers, they're wearing a costume. They're still fornicators, they're wearing a costume. Look at your neighbor and tell them, the costume's got to come off. That is not who you are, that is who you were. But who you are is powerful. Who you are is forgiven and washed and sanctified. Who you are is a child of the living God. And it is time for you to take that old garment off. That's a costume you don't need to wear anymore. That's a burden you don't need to bear anymore. But God has given you new life through Jesus Christ. That you might be a new creature. That you... It's not who I am anymore. And please don't make me okay. With my costume. Please don't encourage me to wear my costume. Please don't. Please don't tell me God's okay with my costume. Please don't tell me God's going to look past my costume. Because that is not who I am. I am a child of the living God. And he has commanded me to be holy even as he is holy. He has commanded me to be righteous. And here's the thing. I can totally sit there and be like, oh, this is so stupid. I know what he's talking about. Let me tell you something. Jesus is coming. And nobody's going to be laughing at Jesus when Jesus is here. But the Bible said every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is a Lord to the glory of God. God in Come on, somebody. Everybody's going to bow. It doesn't matter how funny they think it is now. They won't laugh then. No, they will not. But the Bible said, John said, I saw a throne. And he was set upon him. From whose face the heavens and the earth fled away. And there was found no more place for them. Let me tell you something. My God is so bad that even the earth doesn't want to have to behold his presence. It will pull away from him. Oh, don't think you're going to be laughing. Then laugh now. Crack up now. Make it all funny now. It's hilarious right now. But I'm telling you, there's coming a day when the righteous judge comes and sits on his throne that everybody there will stand and tremble at the presence of the mighty God and they will give an answer for every deed done in their body. It's going to happen. Whether we like it or not. And the disciples witnessed it. Let me tell you something, the lake of fire is real. Whether we like it or not, the lake of fire is real. And there ain't going to be one person that God cast in the lake of fire that he wanted to. It's because they chose to. The judgment is real. It is. And it's not going to be a laughing matter. The Bible said there shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. People are going to go hysterically crazy when they look into that kingdom and they see the curse lifted off that kingdom. 
to where men will learn war no more. God, no more violence. No more evil. No more iniquity. The glory of God will be so profound that the sun won't have to shine. Nor will the moon have to give a light. But the glory of God shall be the light of the city. And they will look into that place of glory. They will look on those immortal bodies. And they'll be standing there in their costume. You and I will have come out the phone. We will be standing there in glory and in honor and in mortality. And they will look at their bodies and they will look at ours and they will say, the Bible said men's hearts shall fail them. They'll have heart attacks right there. They'll die of a heart attack right there, standing there. Because they will see what they lost. Because they thought that everything was a fantasy. Amen. You know what? Mm. In that antediluvian world, which was the known the world that predated the, the ark, everybody thought rain was a fantasy. Mm. Until it started raining. Yeah. They thought it was a big joke. Yeah. They were laughing at Noah. Yeah. They were scorned at him. Go with me back to 2 Peter, the 6th chapter. Listen to this. <coughs> Verse 1. You said, why do we need to know this, Pastor? Because you need to be saved. Yeah. And salvation is not some instantaneous project where I just come down the altar, say some sinner's prayer that some preacher put in my mouth, and I'm good to go. For Paul said, our salvation is nearer now than it was when we first believed. He said, but there were false prophets among people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. This is happening right now. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, their evil ways, by reason of the truth, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. My God. Those, that's judgmental. That's a hateful God. I don't serve a hateful God. I serve a loving God. Amen. 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 The God that I serve is not hateful. He's loving. Yes. In fact, the scripture said it is not his will that any should perish. Amen. That's not God's desire. Amen. But there's a path he's laid out. Right. And the reason why we don't want to take that path is because we think we're greater than God is. We know better. I've had people tell me, I've read scripture to them and they look at me and say, well, I just have to respectfully disagree. Mm -hmm. As if somehow your thoughts <laughs> compare to his? I mean, that's, that, now that's laughable. Well, if you want to laugh at something, you can laugh at that. But many people follow those, those teachings because it exalts man as a god. Amen. And many shall follow the pernicious way by reason of whom the truth shall be evil spoken of and through covetousness Shall they with feigned words, fake words, empty words, mean nothing, <coughs> mean nothing. They, they have no eternal value. They shall what? Make merchandise of you. Become, you become their customer. And they're going to feed you whatever will cause you to buy. Because they want the money. He said... Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. He said, for if God spared not the angels that sin, we're talking about demon spirits, fallen spirits, fallen angels, but cast them down to hell. And the word hell here is not the lake of fire, the word hell here is Tartaru, which is a, a prison. He cast them into a prison and delivered them in chains of darkness to be reserved under judgment. He said, and spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And here's the deal. People say, well, see, the scripture said that God put a bow in the sky, and so he will never flood the earth again. No, he won't. But he won't destroy it by water this time. Amen. He's coming with fire. Amen. 
And he's going to burn this whole thing up. He said, and turning the city of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should live ungodly. Listen, do you hear that? The whole reason why God, by his righteous judgment, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah over sexual immorality was also to give us an example. Should we, after them, live that ungodly life? Keep going. And deliver just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. He delivered Lot because he was angry at the lifestyle of those around him. He became vexed. It, 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 it offended him. It hurt him. And you know what God did? Because he was vexed with the ungodly lifestyle of those wicked men, God delivered him. The church has got to be delivered from this world. Yeah. And the only way we're going to be delivered is if we start getting tired of what we're seeing. Yes, Multiplied millions of unborn babies being killed in the wounds of their mother. This is the greatest genocide ever on the face of the earth. Everybody screams about Hitler. Oh, Hitler is a Nazi and he's horrible and he killed all these people. And he was and he did. But Planned Parenthood has killed, since its inception, has killed over almost 8 million children. Since Roe versus Wade, 72 million babies have been killed. 72 million. Oh, but Hitler was a bad guy. But Planned Parenthood, we're good with that. Because that's not really abortion. That's just delivering the body of unwanted tissue. Well, let me tell you something. One day you were unwanted tissue. Amen. And, they, and, and, and President Reagan said this. Of course, some of y'all too young know President Reagan. But he said this one time. He said, I've noticed everyone that is for abortion has already been born. Amen. It's easy to support something when you are not the victim of it. But see, our children are being inundated with this filth in schools, in education. They're being, it's pounded into them. Pounded into them, pounded into them. And parents, if we don't do something by the way of educating our children in a godly manner, your children are going to be lost in the spray. They're going to be lost in it all. They're going to be lost in the smoke of it. But he killed, he destroyed them. But he delivered Lot because he was he was angry with the lifestyle. Now, we have to understand there is coming a day that God's going to deal with all this. You say, well, I think your God is hateful. If my God was hateful, we'd already be destroyed. That's right. Right. Amen. <laughs> Honestly. Amen. He'd wipe everything out and start over. The reason why I know God is merciful, because he's not yet judged this earth. He's long-suffering because righteously he could, but he has not yet. He's merciful. But there is coming a day that the cup of God's wrath is going to fill to the brim. And one last unrighteous act is going to tip that glass. And when it does, go ahead and read Revelation. Read the seals being opened. Read the vials of wrath being poured out. You'll see exactly what God's going to do to this earth. But there are some of us going to escape that. He's got a place prepared for us that we will escape the wrath of God. But if we, if the church doesn't start getting sick in their stomach over the ungodliness that is surrounding us and start trying to pull everybody we can out of it, then saints of God, we're going to fall prey to it. Eventually, what you do not Eventually, what you do not fight, you condone. Right. Some people say, well, I don't condone abortion. Do you say anything against it? Do you try to educate people on what abortion really is? Do you try to educate on why abortion started in the first place? Did anybody know why abortion started in the first place? It was actually an attempt at the eradication of the black race. Nobody knows that. The woman who's responsible for abortion in the United States, set under Adolf Hitler right. and learn from him. Y'all see people don't know this stuff. Right. 
because it's not being taught. She was an absolute racist. I'm, I'm talking about Hitler and her, same boat. In fact, she's responsible for the murder of more people than he ever was. But that's what it was made for. But we don't know that. You ever see those videos of those Planned Parenthood people standing around applauding at the parts of bodies that they're getting ready to sell of babies? Laughing, having drinks over it. It's Satanism. It's disgusting. But our children are being taught it's just the reading of unwanted tissue. And by the way, it's the woman's body. If it was the woman's body, why is there another heartbeat? I just wonder. And why doesn't the woman scream like the baby does when it's ripping them apart? Did you know those babies scream in the womb while they're being ripped apart? They scream. Because they feel the pain of it. See, we don't know this stuff. And our children don't hear this kind of stuff. They just hear that pro-choice, oh, it's it's the woman's right to choose. It ain't the woman's right to choose. You had a right to choose before you opened your legs. That's right. Amen. Come on, somebody. What did that? I don't know. But we want to push those narratives because men are so grossly evil that the martyr, the murdering of innocent, unborn children, the most vulnerable among us, is applauded. You can rejoice that. It should, it should, it should break our hearts. I thank God my mom didn't want to get rid of me. I thank God for the talent that your mother didn't want to get rid of you. What, what, what a wonderful treasure we would have never known had your mother decided she didn't want you. I, I saw a meme on Facebook. And these people were like, well, if God really was loving, he would send a doctor. If God was really loving, he would send somebody with knowledge to cure cancer. If God was really loving, he would send somebody. And God, and, and God responded and said, I did, but you killed them. I did, but you murdered them. Before they could ever be that person that would have the cure for cancer, you killed them. See, this is, this is the evil of the world that we're dealing with, saints of God. And because our children are so engrossed, and, and let's not give the education system, we do it to them as well. We let them play video games where murder is just, it's fun. Like, we literally, they have fun killing people. They're, we're desensitizing them, their conscience. We're searing it to where murder is no longer even a thing to feel bad about. It's not even something to be horrified over. You know what we've done? We've just let the enemy come into our homes and preach to our children. But we permit them to do so. You want to know why? Because everybody else is doing it, and we don't want our kids to be the weird kids. We don't want them to be the ones that everybody looks at and says, oh, you don't have that? Oh, how often? You're just so weird. So send them to hell, making them popular. Well, you won't answer to God for that one, will you? Lot was vexed with the lifestyle of the wicked. We've embraced it. We've justified it. But the church cannot. We cannot, saints. That is an old man. Amen. That was should. In fact, Paul said that you're even to hate the garment that is spotted by the flesh. In other words, when 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 that old man comes up in you, you should you should yes. get angry. You should fight against that. Yes. Yes. When that temptation comes up in your spirit, fight it. Don't just lay down and give in to it and say, well, I can't help myself. God knows me. He created me. Well, you know it is what it is. God did not create man to sin. Man made that choice. God didn't create man to sin. It was by Adam's disobedience that the knowledge of sin entered the world. Don't blame God for that. And from generation, from Adam even until now, we as parents pass on that knowledge of sin to our children. We, they see us lie. They see us do all these things. We're just passing on knowledge of sin, continuing to pass it down. But I'm telling you, Jesus came with a different knowledge. He came with another revelation. And it was not a revelation of sin and disobedience. It was 
us a revelation of righteousness. And if we will follow his righteous example, if we'll love what he loved, hate what he hated, if we'll do what he did, if we will abstain from what he abstained from, then we will find ourselves righteous before God. Could you imagine that this crown jewel of the heavens, that this son of the living God, that this one who enjoyed glory with the Father would come down and selflessly live a life of sacrifice and righteousness, fighting against temptation and disobedience, and he would live that so that I could look upon it and say, if he can do it, so can I. Oh, God, help us to take off our vesture of the old man. Help us to be dressed in the new man, which is made after righteousness, which is made after peace, which is made after joy, which is made after hope. God, help me to die in you and live in Christ. Help me to be crucified at the cross and help me to live as Christ. I want a new life. Is there anybody in here glad that you found a new life? I don't have to live like I used to. I don't have to be the person I used to be. I can have peace in my mind. I can have joy in my heart. I can live a righteous life. I can abstain from fornication and adultery. I can abstain from lying and stealing because I have been given power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon me. And I now can tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy and nothing my enemies will harm you. scales off our eyes and take the calluses off our hearts till we see through your word again until our conscience is clean I don't have any problem with people preaching on the filthiness of the flesh I don't but they forget that it says to cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit and the Bible said perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Holiness is not an instantaneous and absolute work. Right. It is a process of a lifetime where Christ begins to work in you. Right. And you begin, to, you begin to practice those things that God has put in your heart. When you would lie, all of a sudden you can find yourself going, no, I'll just speak the truth. Because the Bible said forsake lying and speak truth every man with his neighbor. When I would go to take that doesn't, that doesn't belong to me, I would hold that in my that temptation, and I actually go and get a job and work with my hands those things which are good that I might be able to turn and give to others. There's something about this great God that changes you so completely that you no longer have to be the person. Is there anybody just can't stand the person you used to be? I can't stand it. When I look back over my life and I see all the dumb things that I permitted my flesh to do because I made the choice to let it do it. When I look at that, my God, it makes me mad. I just get sick down in my stomach thinking about it because I'm hating the garment that is spun out of the flesh. You want to know why? Because that garment doesn't belong to me anymore. I have been given a new vesture. It is called the divine nature. It is called the vesture of Jesus Christ. I have put on Christ. Because I know he's coming. I know he is. I, there's no question in my mind. I have no question about it. I have no question. We, we asked some of the students in our school, one of the things that caused you to doubt God, and, and they said evolution. Now, evolution is no longer a theory. When I was in school, people were brilliant enough to at least call it a theory. Because there is no fact at all about evolution. In fact, it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does creation. To believe that somehow, in the cosmics somewhere matter collided right. and out of this matter which they call the bang, the big bang <laughs> life began and out of all of that chaos and confusion came everything that has order and structure to believe that you have to have a tremendous amount of faith so don't call me crazy because I believe that there's actually a designer because you believe that nothing created everything and everything has order out of chaos. Right. That is faith like I don't know what. You just have to absolutely blindly accept that. 
You can, there's no fact to it. You just have to accept it. If somebody came to me and said, Pastor Man, you see this car right here? I'm going to tell you how it happened. We found rubber metal. And we found leather and, and, and yarn and all of these things that make a car. And for the past thousand years, we threw it up and made it hit each other. This is, this is the theory of evolution. We threw it up and it slammed into each other multiple, over and over again for a thousand years, every day, every minute, every second, it just slammed. And believe it or not, just the other day, when it came back down, it was a car. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's not funny, because that's evolution. Yet they teach that as a serious fact to our children. That's real. That actually happened. That is such garbage. But nobody laughs about it because they think it's right. But if you tell me, Mr. Manning, I went down to the Ford Company. And there I watched the sketch artist draw a car. I, I, I watched the man define and determine all the schematics and the little variables that would be in the car. Then I watched as they took things that were already created, like tires and brakes and windows, and I watched them on an assembly line take all of these things and put them together. And now you have your car. Which one would you believe? You would believe the second one. Because the only thing that our children are being taught doesn't have a designer as creation. Everything else that we use, that we write in, that we brush our teeth, that we wipe ourselves with, somebody made that. But creation, it was a total accident. How foolish is that? But see, when we're not fighting that stuff at home, when we're not looking at our children and saying, think about this reasonably. Now, God made them reasonable. All right? he, he gave them common sense. So use their common sense. Use it. Take the scripture and say, how, is, how reasonable it is it? Think about it. We're talking a million years of, 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 of just things evolving for no reason. No law. There's no really no law of evolution. It's just, you know, these monkeys out here, they evolved into men. But some of them just like to be monkeys, so they just stay monkeys. <laughs> because if evolution was correct, we'd have no monkeys. What, what dumb monkey out there went, you know what? I could be a human. I could talk. I could make money. I could do all kinds of stuff. Or I could fling my own poop. <laughs> I think I would stay a monkey. That's not reasonable. That's not reasonable. It doesn't make sense. But that's what's being indoctrinated. Right. God gave us reasonable minds to understand that he created everything. Why are there tadpoles? Why are there fish? If evolution is correct, and, and what are the monkeys that are evolving today? I've yet to see an ape come out of the out of, out of, out of the, the forest and the jungle and be like, today... Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a man. <laughs> I've never seen it. When did it stop? When did evolution stop? And people say, well, it, it, haven't you heard about you know, adaptation and all that stuff? Oh, we can have conversations about it. I don't have time to have it today, but we can talk about it. The fact of the matter is, we believe that everything has a designer and a creator mm -hmm. but creation. Yeah. Yeah. Believe us or not, guys, this guy took some wool and thread and plastic, threw it up over the past billion years, and now you see this fine suit I wear. How ridiculous. It is laughable. 
But that's the kind of nonsense that is being taught in a world that is rejecting the God that created. Once humanity begins to reject its creator, it becomes completely insane and ridiculous. It absolutely loses all sense of thought and reason. Teach your children yes. the truth. Amen. And the truth will make them free. Amen. Amen. Let's take off that old vesture, saints. Amen. Let's put on the new one. We got I got new clothes. Listen, I'd rather be Superman than Clark Kent any day. Amen. I mean, I would be, you know. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take on this divine nature yeah. and be what God has called me to be. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. I'm done for the day. Night, day. It's not all day. When we grew up, as kids, we were told a green blob of substance came out of the water. That's how we were created. I tried to pick. When I look at some people, I don't believe it. Green blob. I, you can look at my color. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. There's no sense to it. And nothing around us teaches us that. Nothing. Nothing in creation teaches us that. Evolution. And so let's not accept that, saints. Let's not embrace that. Let's accept the truth. Let's accept who we are. Let's teach our children against ungodliness. Let's teach them. Listen, do do some studying. Be diligent. When they come home, talk about abortion. Do your research. Figure out why why it began in the first place, and then teach them what happens during it. You'll you'll see a lot of change in your kids once they hear the truth. It'll change them. And don't take for granted that the school system is giving it to them. Because you are fooling yourself only. It's the reality of that. I'm telling you. All right. We're going to get out of here for the day. We'll be back here tonight at 6. So thankful for everybody that has come to be with us. Sheila Johnson. Amen. We're so glad uh, that she was here with us this morning. Uh, she is Sister Patricia's sister. Is that correct? All right. So we're glad to have you with us this morning. We're so glad to have the presence of the Lord with us this morning. Aren't we? Thank God for his anointing and his power. Uh, we do want to continue to remember Sister Mary and her family in prayer uh, at the passing of uh, her father. Uh, we want to remember Sister Virginia. Sister Opal is not here today. Sister Virginia is not doing well. Uh, it looks like she is heading toward that great appointment that all of us must make. And so we will pray for Sister uh, Opal and for the whole household as they uh, help to take care of the situation. Brother Tommy Holloman, uh, I don't know if he's out yet, but the last time I spoke to him, he was in the hospital. They were running tests on him, uh, so we want to pray for him. Also, uh, leadership meeting and luncheon is next Sunday after the morning service. We are going to have a singing on the grounds uh, October the 5th from 2 to 5 p.m. Uh, our dedication weekend is going to be November the 1st and the 2nd. Uh, and then the Atlanta meeting is going to be November the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Also, the Transform Youth Group is going to have another Youth Day Friday, October the 18th. Um, from 6 to 9.30, it is going to be a glow night. Y'all are going to glow. <laughs> and, and here is an awesome thing. Yesterday, they had their youth event. They've got a game room, a gym, and all of that over here on the, the, the Bible camp. And they have opened that to us to use any time we want. They've got, they've, got, they've, got, they've, got, they've got like foosball and billiards. And for those of you that don't know what billiards is, because that's an old word, pool tables. Then they've got this thing called carpet ball, which I have not played yet, but it looks really cool. Uh, they've got they've got all kinds of stuff over there. They've got a gym with basketball. Um, it's it's just an incredible thing. We have been praying that God would give us a center where we could use for the youth, and God has opened that up for us. And so we thank God for that. Also, they took us on a tour of the campground, um, all over the place. It is an incredible place. It, it looks really small over there, but there's like 46 acres worth of campground over there. Uh, in fact. They've got, of course, they've got the rock climbing wall and zip line. They've got, they even have paintball over there. I, I wouldn't mind to hit somebody with a paintball, you know, so. Uh, but they have paintball over there. Uh, they've got all kinds of stuff that we can use that is at our disposal now, unless they're having a camp over there. 
and which they, they don't have very many after July. And so young folks, jump in here. We're going to have all kinds of fun. Also, starting October, the first and third Wednesday night of the month, we are going to have youth Bible study during the regular service. We're going to have a regular service with youth Bible study. We've got this curriculum. It's called Light Bears, and it deals with the culture uh, around the kids and how a child of God exists within that culture. And so, parents, please do your best. Get your young people in the church. Yes. Get them in the church. Yes. Let them be taught. Listen, we got folks here that love the young folks and they're pouring into them. Get your young person here. They'll have all kinds of fun, number one, fellowship. It's good. That's how young people fellowship. They have fun together. They have all kinds of fun in fellowship. They're also going to be instructed uh, in the word, and I'm looking forward uh, to that as we move forward. So starting October, the first Wednesday and the third Wednesday of the month, we're going to have our youth Bible study, and then October the 18th, we will have uh, the Transformed Youth Night. It says day, but it's probably going to be more toward night because by that time, you know, it's going to be. And, and, and it says youth day and glow night. <laughs> I'm totally confused. <laughs> so we've got things here we want to pray for. Let's stand to our feet. Let's be back tonight at 6. Choir here at 515. Amen. I tell you what, the music is just doing such a wonderful job. The music department is doing a tremendous job bringing us into the presence of the Lord. We thank God for them. Miss everybody that's not here today, but I think we've had some that are out sick, some that are out of town, so we uh, we pray for them as well. But let's try to be back here tonight at six o'clock. You just I'm telling you, missing Sunday night services like you just don't want to. It is you just never know. You never know what's going to take place in the Sunday night. But let's pray, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your covering.